This is our final session together. So we're going to spend some time recapping, pulling everything together and planning for the future. I want you to have some of the supporting documents handy. Firstly, you'll need your GAD7 questionnaire that we completed in session three. And secondly, you need a copy of your goals. Finally, you'll need a blank piece of paper. So make sure you have a notepad and pen and you take some notes of questions whilst we run through them today. We'll take a lot of notes, which will form part of your plan for your future. Firstly, Lo, let's have a look at your exposure homework. How did you get on? Take a moment now to reflect on what you achieved and make a plan for the next week. What went well? What did you learn? Do you need to repeat the exercise or do you need to set yourself something a bit more challenging? Take a moment and plan that now. At the beginning of the course, I explained that CBT requires practice, and that practice is not going to end here. The exercises we've worked through will need visiting on a weekly basis to really make sure it's ingrained in your everyday thinking and behaviour. After all, remember, CBT is not about learning coping tools, it's about challenging your beliefs and changing your behaviour for lasting change. We've covered a lot of different concepts over the last few weeks, so let's spend some time summarising your journey. Together, we're going to create a therapy blueprint. This will be your personal therapy summary and a plan for the future. Throughout the course, I've shown you how to understand your difficulties through visual diagrams, and today is no different. But this time, we're going to draw out a diagram together that shows you how to keep well. Hopefully, you've got a blank piece of paper in front of you or a blank document on your computer or on your phone. Take a look at this image of a flower. This is called a virtuous flower. I want you to draw out something similar, starting with a large circle in the centre of your page. In the centre of the flower, I want you to write down a word, or maybe a few, that suggests how you feel when you're not worrying. Perhaps it's how you're feeling after completing this course of CBT. Or maybe it's the feeling you're still working towards. Think about the feeling you want to maximise in your life. Maybe it's feeling content, or happy, peaceful, or clear-minded. Take a moment now to write this in the centre of your flower.
Around the outside of the flower, we have petals. Each petal will represent a cycle, but this time we're looking at virtuous cycles. Things you've learned from this course, behavioural changes, different ways of thinking, what you might be doing differently, how you might approach problems differently. These behaviours and thinking styles feed back into the positive emotion in the flower. Take a look at some of the examples taken from clients I've worked with who have covered some similar exercise we've looked at during, this, during the course. Be spontaneous and reduce planning. See opportunities in my problems. Stop avoiding the things I think will make me anxious. Remind myself that I can cope. Not to overestimate how scary something might be. Face my fear. Take more risks. Problem solve. Don't catastrophize. Don't climb the ladder into hypothetical worry. Give more responsibility to others. Stop asking for reassurance. Trust myself. Have a look back now at some of your notes over the last few sessions and create petals to remind yourself of the most important message.
keep this image somewhere handy as a quick reference for what you can do to maximise this feeling in your life. Remember, this might not be the way that you feel every day, but your aim is to maximise this feeling and minimise the anxiety. Next, we need to take a look at the outcome of therapy for you. You may remember in session three, I asked you to complete a measure of anxiety called the GAD7. Have a look at your original score now and spend a minute just completing the questionnaire again. Have a look for any differences between your first and your last score. A score below eight shows a normal level of anxiety. Remember, nobody ever scores a zero. Scores between eight to 12 show a mild level of anxiety. Up to 15 shows moderate and over 15 indicates severe. Of course, I hope your scores have come down, but if they haven't, think about why that might be. Are there things going on in life right now that continue to cause you anxiety? And can you apply any of the things that you've learned to this? For example, are there behaviours you're engaged with that create more anxiety around a problem? And can you use any of the breathing exercises from the beginning of each module? Can you problem solve rather than think about all the hypothetical scenarios? And did you complete all the exercises throughout therapy? Was there anything that got in your way? And do you need to revisit anything? Next, I want you to look at your goals from the beginning of therapy. For each goal, I'd like you to rate on a scale of 0 to 10 how far towards achieving the goal you are. 10 indicating it's been achieved.
some of you, this therapy might not feel enough or it might not feel like the right approach. I'd encourage you to visit our website for further information. If this course has felt helpful but not quite enough, take a look at our directory and contact either myself or one of the team to book an individual session. If you'd like a one-off session to review any of the topics covered in the course, you can also contact me. Finally, you have one more homework exercise. In your supporting documents, you'll have a worksheet called Blueprint for the Future. This is a document that will help you summarise everything you've learned and create a plan for the future that will help prevent relapses. Remember, setbacks are normal, worry is normal, anxiety is normal. If you find yourself experiencing any early warning signs that your anxiety is returning, don't add fuel to the fire by worrying about this. Have a look at your blueprint plan and your virtuous flower, revisit the modules, and if your worry and anxiety begins to impact your life and these exercises are no longer working, this might be the time to visit your GP or consider further therapy. Finally, I want to end here by acknowledging your courage, strength and hard work. If you've got to this stage, you've committed yourself to therapy and likely some emotionally demanding changes. This is admirable. So take away everything you've learned, practice it every day and spread the message to others. I hope you've got what you've needed from our work together and I wish you every success in the future to living a life with less anxiety and more contentment.